Super Mario Bros. is a staple in the video game industry. Enough said. Almost everything video games have today, from their prominence in pop culture to the generations of creative talent they've inspired, owes everything to Nintendo's flagship franchise. I don't have to spend a lot of time saying that because we all know this. We have our own preferences, sure, but its influence can't be denied. If it wasn't for Mario, it's safe to bet that we'd have none of this. Even though Sonic is way better. This year marks the 30th anniversary for the plumber. So to celebrate, Nintendo has bestowed upon us its latest entry in the series. Super Mario Maker! Just by the title, you know what you're in for. For the first time ever, on a home console, you can create, play, and share your very own Mario levels. Styles ranging from the 1985 original to New Super Mario Bros. As someone who calls himself a designer, I can say that not only is this an amazing toolkit to play around with, but I can only imagine what this kind of game can give designers of the future. That said, for someone who might be new to the concept of making a fully realized Mario level, the challenge can be pretty daunting. Outside of a scripted intro sequence, the game doesn't really give you much guidance outside of here's some bricks, put a Goomba on it. So yeah, a lot of responsibility is going to be put on the player base. And by now, I'm sure we've seen one or both of the game grumps lose their mind playing a level or two. Fuck! Fuck! Come on, man! With that in mind, I wanted to bring my design brain to bear and share my knowledge with all of you. If you follow these tips using the game's tools, you'll be crafting quality courses in no time. What we see here is the default editor screen. Looking at the layout, Super Mario Maker seems to be the game the Wii U was made for. The gamepad's existence is finally justified, uh, again I guess, plus the game makes it a point to make watching someone build a level as interesting as making one themselves. It's a game making tool that plays like a game. That's pretty remarkable when you consider a lot of tools usually look like this, or this, put a Goomba on it. So we've got our tools, so where do we start? Now I'm assuming you did the required reading over summer, and how the basics of Mario games play. Namely the running and jumping, you know, the only mechanics in there. In the beginning, the game limits the tools you have access to. Now this is actually a good thing. But why? Well, while you may have played Mario games in the past, the boys at Nintendo know exactly why you shouldn't have Hammer Brothers and Spinies on World 1-1. Looking at what we have though, the game makes it easy to drop in bricks, pits, points, and hazards. You'll find early on that if you want players to travel along a specific path, the tools you have provide incentives for them to go there. Let's make a platform of bricks. Now let's put some coins on top. Those are shiny, we gotta grab them. Let's take things a little bit further though. We'll have those coins on top of the bricks along with an enemy. Jumping on top might not be the safest thing to do. So let's stay under the bricks, that way we can take out the enemy and also grab the coins. Understanding that basic level of visual communication is essential to crafting an experience for the player. And make note that your toolkit will expand the more you practice around with different elements. Different enemies can tell the player very different things. A Hammer Brother is more dangerous than a Koopa. That might make the player want to rush through a challenge or try to take out the enemy quicker. You can even throw in a bonus or two. Understanding the best way to utilize the tools you have at hand will take you far with your levels, but there's something else we have to keep in mind when you're starting out though. Timing. Every zone of the level map is made up of the same amount of tiles. If you're going to have anything noteworthy in your level, you have to consider where everything from the items and enemies are placed within those tiles. It could be the matter of seeing a buzzy beetle coming at you, or knowing when to give the player a super mushroom. Take a look at my level here. At this point, you're surrounded by hazards and you have to navigate around. Once you make it to the second moving platform, you see the super leaf swinging back and forth behind you. Here's where the super leaf is placed in the editor. We see what it looks like when it's been uploaded, so let's see what happens if we move it up one tile. Oh, that's a bit too late. Maybe that can cause some troubles. Okay, what if we moved it down one space? We're jumping. Whoa, 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 what's happening? Okay, that might be a little too early. The placement of that leaf was important, not just for the player to have a fair shake at getting their hands on the power-up, but also make sure the player isn't disoriented by touching the power-up off-screen. So right out of the gate, you as a level designer are tasked with two key things. You have to attune the player to the ins and outs of your level by creating scenarios that show them how it's played. What's nice is that we get extra tools to do just that. 
The fact that you can now title your levels and leave comments is a great avenue for this. We're not limited to calling them just numbers anymore. No, no, no. Just by giving even the plainest description of your level can mentally prepare new players coming in. Or I could just be a dick and eat something stupid. The point is, even with the entry level amount of tools, you can make some truly remarkable levels. You want more though, right? You want to see some next level shit, yeah? All right, strap in. Getting deeper into the toolkit, we can finally play around with different variants of Super Mario gameplay. Outside of their own aesthetics, each variant of Super Mario Bros. has its own rules and mechanics. Short story shorter, you can pick things up and fly with the Super Leaf in Super Mario Bros. 3. Super Mario World gives you those, but also gives you the spin jump and the ability to kick items into the air. Finally, new Super Mario Bros., while removing some things, gives you access to the wall jump and an extra spin move to keep you airborne. That thing can save your life. We've all seen it happen. You bet. Oh, oh shit! Ho -ho! The beauty of having these tools at your disposal is, you guessed it, using them. These new mechanics bring a whole new world of depth to your level making possibilities. It makes you think twice about how the player engages with items and enemies, and how you as a designer can present them with challenges that utilize them. Like right here, I had my level where I wanted to have a shell kick down a blocked path. Now I could have done it this way using a trampoline or a note block, but the results were too inconsistent. Having the hazard act that way had too many variables. Is the player running or walking? Will the player even jump on the Koopa to begin with? What space was the shell kicked from? On and on and on and enough already! I needed the player to have more control over the shell, and that's what the pickup mechanic in Super Mario Bros. 3 allowed me to do. Knowing when to utilize these mechanics is just as fun as planning levels around them. Plus, designing a level that explores all of the different ways you can approach different obstacles creates a fluid, varied, and satisfying experience. It's like using all of your moves in a fighting game. Seeing that variety and mixing it up and pulling off a crazy combination just feels good. That's the core of the gaming experience. It can be challenging or it can be a cakewalk, but the true test of a level is that feeling of true satisfaction. How sentimental. Let's move on to the final lesson. Here's where shit gets weird. Here we've got a Goomba. Put a Goomba on it. We have the power to literally combine anything with anything we can imagine in Super Mario Maker. This isn't just about Goomba Towers either, oh no 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 no. I'm talking Lakitu's making it rain! Cannons that shoot springs for no damn reason! You want a speedy winged boo carrying a hammer bro? You got it! These combos have so much potential. I just want to run through one thing I saw recently that blew my mind. I was in a ghost house where I saw a thwomp on top of a boo. Naturally, we're trained not to have boos come toward us, but here we see there's breakable bricks guarding our only way into the level. And you see where I'm going with this, just watch. A lot of us are just scratching the surface of what kind of things we can create. There's every chance this is a far more powerful tool than what we see on the surface right away. Now, we've gone over a lot of potentials for levels today. And that's all well and good, but before we go, we need to go over a short list of don'ts. Number one, avoid negative possibility space. Negative possibility space is the creation of an expectation, whether intentional or not, that leads to nothing. How can this relate to Mario? Have you ever dedicated yourself to kicking a shell through a wall only to have nothing at the end of it all? That's exactly what you want to avoid. Number two, esoteric secrets. Remember the golden rule, a secret is rarely a solution. The player has to be equipped with the right tools to accomplish what the level demands of them, period. This is why secrets are usually reserved for bonus rooms and helpful items. It can give the player an extra bit of health, a weapon, or an alternate path to the flagpole. I say again though, a secret is not the solution. They're augmentations, bonuses, a reward for players who are dedicated enough to find them. If the spectacle of hitting a hidden block is what you want to have, you have to train the player to find them too. Try using background elements or hanging coins, anything really. Finally, number three, don't be quiet this game is going to be carried entirely by its community. Give out stars, follow level makers, and leave comments. People take the time to make these levels that you enjoy. We take time to play through them, and we should acknowledge that. Moving on to some final thoughts. 
If the potential for DLC is there, I have a few ideas for things that could really elevate the level-making potential further. This goes beyond given stuff like costumes or other environments or music. I'm thinking things that can change how levels are made themselves. I'd like to see desert, snow, and beach levels. Functionally, they'd play about the same, with areas where you have water where you can sink or swim, and it would justify having the ice surfaces. It would also add the potential for other items and enemies to be added in, like the mini mushroom, the penguin suit, and enemies like Big Bertha or the penguins. Level hazards like wind and tornadoes or blizzards, all of them can perform essentially the same way, but in a different aesthetic, which would also add some great variety. Another small addition that would add more variety, but something that would also reinforce the previous request? Being able to have levels end in sub-areas. I understand the limitation of the past, looking at levels like 1-2, where you have to go down a pipe only to come back up at the end. But this could be a small change that could encourage a lot more people to mix and play around with different landscape types. Although it may sound small, having more visual variety would go a long way to prevent game fatigue. Super Mario Maker is just as amazing of a tool as it is a game. I haven't seen a program like this better suited for its platform, let alone its finesse and its execution, in a long time. If there was a design brain steal of approval, which now there is, Mario Maker is its first winner. If you have the patience, don't hesitate to buy this game, and make sure to keep these rules in mind. That's all from me, so until next time, remember, learning is important. See you next time.